We now have an enemy or a danger which will send the player back to the beginning. Uh, but there's two things that we probably want to look at at this point. One is having an enemy that can move around the whole game area. And the other thing is that you might decide that the lava is great on level one, but either you don't want it on level two or you want it in a different place. So how can you do those two things? Let's start off as we've got the lava here already. Let's start off with having the lava appear only on level one. At the moment, if I run the game, you can see that I have the lava on level one. And if I try and just complete the game quickly and get onto level two, there it is on level two in the same place. Um, and I may not want it to be visible at all on level two. It'll still work. It'll still send me back to the beginning of level two, uh, but I may not want it to be visible. So first of all, I'll show you how to make sure that the lava is only visible for certain levels, and then we'll create a moving enemy. So first of all, what we need to do is uh, make sure we're selecting the uh, lava um, sprite here and then make sure that we're in the code window on the left hand side here. So we've already got this forever loop. It's always asking uh, this question if we're touching the player, but it probably also needs to ask another question. Is this level one? So let's go to control and grab um, an if else because again there's going to be two possible options either it is level one or it isn't level one um, so we can uh, we can do that if we actually are thinking about it you may decide to take this a bit further so I'm going to change my mind here uh, my prerogative sorry um, so I'm going to do it this way and then that'll allow us to uh, extend this later so in this case, what we're going to do is make sure at the beginning of the game, the lava is hidden and only show it if it's level one. And I'll show you what to do if you want to, to make it visible on other layers afterwards. So first of all, what we'll do, we're in the lava code, is right at the top, we're going to break that apart just for the moment. We're going to go to looks and we're going to find the hide button there. So I'm going to pop that at the top. So now when the game runs, the lava is hidden and it won't work either. So if I was to land down there, I'm perfectly fine. I'm not going to uh, to die. So uh, at the moment, then the lava is hidden. Inside this forever loop, we want to have one of these if blocks. Let's just put it underneath the other if block. So you see we have two if blocks there, one to see if we're touching the player and one underneath it, which we'll use to see if it's level one. So we need a uh, something equals something if level one, sorry, if level equals one. So let's go to operators and grab an equals block and pop it in there. We want our level variable on the left and then one on the right. So if level is equal to one, then what do we do? We need to hide it. Oh, sorry, we need to show it, beg pardon. Um, so there we are. If level is equal to one, then show it. What about if we don't want it on level two then? So this is where having this one if block here that we can duplicate will work well for you. I can pop that duplicate uh, duplicate one underneath it there and say if level is equal to two, then hide. So that way I can control whether or not the lava is hidden or not, depending upon the level. Let's say, for example, um, I want it to be shown on level three. So if level is three, then I want to show the lava. And then if it's level four, I want to hide the lava. So you see, by doing this, each time we level up, um, the lava either appears or it disappears. So now it'll look like this. So if you run the game, uh, the lava appears. Then if I go on to level two, the lava has disappeared. Now, if I can complete level two, we should find on level three, the lava is back. There it is. Oh, and very nicely fitted in. <laughs> I'd like to say that I planned that, but I don't think I did. Um, now, I probably can't even complete this level because uh, it's a little bit, whoops, no, I'm going not going to do this at all uh, but you can well 
you'll just have to trust me that on level four, if I could get there, uh, if level four, uh, the lava would disappear. So that's how you can make um, a sprite, a lava sprite or spikes, whatever it is, appear and disappear between the levels. Um, so what about moving then? What about moving a sprite around? Well, let's have a new enemy for this because it doesn't make much sense for the uh, lava to be flying all over the place. So let's have a new enemy. I'm going to, uh, to draw this enemy out again. So we're going to click on paint. And again, we're going to keep it really simple. We're not going to worry too much uh, about it. I'm going to have a, uh, let's uh, have a red, um, a red circle for the moment. So I'll draw out a red circle. Um, and uh, should we put some eyes on it? Should we have some angry eyes perhaps? Uh, let's do that, angry eyes. So let's have a uh, white color now. So let's change that to, uh, to white like that. Uh, and draw out a white circle. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit so we can see it more clearly. Uh, then I'm going to draw a, uh, let's see, green. I think green will be good. Green eyes. So I'm going to have green eyes, quite dark green eyes like that. There we go. Uh, that'll be a slightly smaller circle. Uh, then I want a uh, black circle, even smaller than that and then another white circle. You probably have no idea quite what I'm doing at the moment, but it will all work out, trust me. Right, there we are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that white circle on top of the black circle. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to make a mistake. There we are. I'm going to use the selection tool to select that and put it on top of the um, green circle like that. Now you can probably see what I'm doing. There's that green eye. Um, and then I want to put that on top of the white circle there. And that gives me the eye. There we are. Lovely. Now what I can do is I can copy and paste that and put it next to the first one. I'm using the grid to make sure those are lined up. And of course, they're far too big. So I'm going to select those and resize it and move them down onto the enemy like that. There we go. Now, at the moment, the enemy looks a little bit too friendly. So I think we need to give him some severe eyebrows. So let's uh, let's draw some angry eyebrows. Uh, it's interesting to see how just a simple line can actually make the expression change quite dramatically. So I'm going to uh, to draw a line up here like that. Always easier with uh, with a program like this, a drawing program like this, to to draw things that are off that because once they're off, you can select them. Once they're on top of the other drawing, you can't. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to use this flip horizontal to flip it the other way, put it so it's lined up. I think that's lined up uh, and then select both of those eyebrows, bring them down. They're a little bit. Actually, they're too. No, I'm going to undo that. I think this one needs to be a little bit further apart. And I think they're a little bit too big as well. So I might just have to reduce the size of those slightly and move them down like that. There we go. So uh, now we've got that looking a bit more severe. Um, and then we can, uh, I don't know, should we do a, a face perhaps as well on this? Let's do a, a little face. So I'm going to have a, a mouth rather, so black perhaps here, a uh, black circle, or let's do a paintbrush. Um, and let's just paint out a kind of angry mouth, like it's shouting like that. It's not very good, but I think it'll do for now uh, and pop that down there like that. So there we are. That's my sprite. Um, I'm sure you can do better, but that just gives you an example. Again, I'm going to grab the middle point of that and put over the middle point of the. So this little crosshair here, middle point of the sprite window. There we go. And then I'm done with that. So I can come over to the um, play field over here and just reduce the size of that. It's obviously too big. Let's try 20 percent. Oh, that's too small. Let's try 40 percent. I think that's about right. We'll go for 40 percent. Uh, so there we are. So that's now my enemy. And I'm going to name this sprite and I'm going to name it enemy like that. 
so we've got our um, enemy we've got um, no code for it at the moment of course the code itself is going to be in two parts so one part is going to be exactly the same as the um, code for the lava uh, we don't need oops we don't need particularly to worry about showing it or hiding it uh, that won't matter so much so what I'm going to do for the moment is I'm just going to pull out this is on the lava um, sprite I'm pulling out all the code that either shows or hides the lava and I'm going to take the rest of this code and I'm going to drag and drop it on top of the enemy sprite that I've just made there right now I can just put all this back together again for the lava and if I now click on the enemy sprite you see we now have a copy of this but of course we don't want that hide block at the top we need to make sure this is always visible so we'll just get rid of that so now when uh, the uh, game starts the red enemy here will do a forever loop if it's touching the player uh, then we broadcast that message ouch and the player of course when it receives that message ouch will go back to the start position of course if you wanted a different message because you didn't want the uh, ouch word to appear uh, you can do so the uh, the enemy could broadcast the message caught in fact i'll do that just in case because although some of you might go for uh, exactly what i'm doing some of you might want to experiment so i'll show you uh, how to do this differently um, so uh, what i'll do for the enemy i'll broadcast um, the message caught so the the uh, enemy has caught the player so now the the uh, player isn't listening for that message caught anymore um, so we need to duplicate that for the ouch get rid of the ouch message and just switch that to caught so now the player when it receives the new level message from the portal goes to the start position when it receives the ouch message from the lava it goes to the start position and says ouch and when it receives the message caught from the enemy it goes back to the beginning coordinates again so the player is doing slightly different things depending on what message it receives so the player now is uh, broadcasting that message but of course when we run the game um, although the player can move around the enemy isn't going anywhere it will work if i jump up here and i touch the enemy bang uh, you see there's no message ouch displayed but the player does go back to the beginning so how about getting uh, this little dude here to move around well we want a separate block of code uh, from this um, make, makes things a bit easier for us to, to see so let's grab the green flag so uh, when the game begins what do we do well uh, we want to make sure first of all that this character here um, goes to the center or, or some start position let's start them off in in this uh, corner here or over here let's start them over here there we are so i'm going to go to motion now and grab the go to block and that'll have the coordinates of where i've just put the enemy so the enemy will go to uh, that location to begin with um, and uh, the other thing that we need to do at the moment the character this sprite uh, as it starts to move around will naturally tend to rotate to face the direction it's going in but of course if it's going down it'll actually rotate so it's upside down and that'll look a bit ridiculous so what I'm going to do is click on the direction button just here which brings up this uh, guide and there are three possible options here one is um, the all around it's called and basically that means that the sprite will spin around and face whichever way it's going but that, as I say, can be and it faces upside down when it's going down, which, as I say, doesn't look good. Um, we can set it so it doesn't rotate at all, so it always looks exactly like this. Or we can set it, which I'm going to do, as left and right, because it isn't symmetrical. The, the um, mouth and eyes are slightly uh, looking towards the left. So we'll have him um, switching around uh, left and right. So he can look left and right, but he won't uh, spin around. So take that off um, and uh, we now need us to have a loop we need these forever loops again so it'll constantly do this because uh, while the game is playing it'll constantly need to, uh, to do something 
And uh, this is something that you can now change and play with because we want it to constantly move, but how fast? I'm gonna try three steps. If you find that's too fast, you can reduce that. If you want to move him faster, you can increase it. So for the moment, I'm gonna say just move three steps. Uh, so uh, this will now, if I run the game, move three steps, but of course it'll hit the edge. So every time I play the game, it moves three steps, but then it hits the edge. So what do we want it to do? Well, we need somehow to tell whether it's touching the edge. In other words, we need to ask a question. We need to know whether it's touching the edge. So what two blocks do you think we need if we need to ask a question whether this sprite is touching the edge? So have a think about it. What two blocks do you think you will need? Have we got it? Okay, well, give yourselves a, a clap on the back if you said an if block, because that's exactly what we need. We need to ask the question if something has happened. So after we move three steps, we ask that question if. If what? What's the second block? It's in sensing and it's whether we are touching the edge. So if we grab this touching and uh, change it to edge, this means the edge of the entire uh, game. Now I will show you something else that we can do which uh, sometimes works sometimes doesn't. I'll uh, show you two alternatives here but I'm going to begin with touching edge which is the the whole edge top bottom left and right. So I'm going to drop that in the cartouche there. Uh, so what happens if it's touched the edge well it needs to first of all take a step backwards. So if it's actually touched the edge go back a bit. So we're going to grab the uh, move block again put that in here uh, and to step backwards it's a minus. So we'll go back, we'll go back minus 10 steps. So we're well clear of the wall. And then we need to uh, to turn into a different direction. We obviously can't keep going in the same direction. Uh, otherwise he'll hit the wall, step backwards, hit the wall, step backwards, and he'll end up just going in a, in a loop forever more. So we need him to turn and face in a different direction. So let's grab the, uh, the turn block here. So turn. Uh, by default it has 15 degrees in there. We don't want it to always be 15 degrees, otherwise it'll be too predictable. If I, uh, if I run the game, it'll hit there, go 15 degrees, uh, and then it'll kind of keep getting stuck like that. If I try changing it to, let's say, 45 degrees. So now if we run this, uh, you'll see that each time it goes off, it goes off at 45 degrees. But again, it kind of gets trapped around the edge if we do that. So we need it to be more unpredictable. And the ideal thing for games when you want things to be unpredictable is to use random numbers. Random numbers are a core part of every single game you've ever played. And they're found in operators. And you can find this block here, pick random. And it's a random number from, in this case, 1 to 10. So let's pop that in there, but obviously we don't want uh, a random number between one and 10 degrees, that won't do much. So let's try between 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So let's see what that looks like now when we run the game. So we run the game and you can see there that uh, sprite is now bouncing off the walls in a slightly random direction. So it's, uh, it's now coming right over here and we can see that it is getting very close to our player and oh, there we go, it touched the player. Now you could see there, that was an ideal example there because you could see what was going on. It touched the player and it was bouncing around in this corner for a little bit and it kept touching the player and touching it again. And I don't know how many times uh, these two sprites were colliding together, but it was probably at least six or seven. And so that could potentially be a problem. So what we need to do is when this enemy sprite has touched the player, we need that enemy sprite to go far away. We need it to go way away again uh, somewhere else. Now, uh, where can we put it? Well, we want it to be random again, I think. Or we don't want it to always go back to the start position because it could be, of course, that's exactly where the player is. And if it's too predictable, the player will start to realize that and, and take advantage of it. So uh, let's uh, now look at this block of code here, which is when we touch the player. This is the one that says, if we're touching the player, what do we do? We broadcast the message caught, but once the player, once the enemy has caught the player, 
let's then send this enemy to a random location. So let's grab the, uh, the go to block. So go to and drop it underneath that broadcast court. But here we need this to be a random number and we need that to be a random number. So let's say here in operators that the X position, so the random position left and right, is going to be between two numbers. What are those numbers? Well, let's grab this uh, enemy and move it as far left as we would want it to go, which is about there. And I can see that the coordinates down here say minus 183. So that's the furthest left we would want it to go. And if we move this player towards the right, that's as far right as I'd want to go. Um, and so that is positive 184. There we go. And uh, I'll just move that out of the way a minute because we now need a random number for the Y, for the vertical. So let's grab another random block. Uh, let's say that this is the uh, the lowest we would want to go down here. Uh, so we can see that the uh, Y value is minus 123. So it's some random position between minus 123. And if I move it right to the top, uh, the Y position is 125. Now, don't just copy my numbers because uh, your uh, platform may have uh, thicker walls or thicker top or a, a deeper base or something. Uh, but use the method that I've used and that will then give you that random position. So now if I run the game, uh, what I'm going to do is try and get, uh, oops, yeah, well, that didn't work, did it? Try and get caught by the enemy. So let's see if we can get caught. There we go. Oops, no, we didn't. There. Um, oh, now the enemy. Did the enemy go to random position? I think it did, but it was very similar to where it was before. So let's try again. And oops, there we go. Now you saw that perhaps uh, the player was sent back to the beginning and the enemy went to a, oops, I'm not really not good at this game, a random position. So each time I press, uh, each time the player touches the enemy, the enemy is going to a new random position. So it's well away from the player. So that at least gives the player a reasonably good chance of carrying on the game. So then we'll go to the new layer. There we are. The lava's disappeared. The enemy, of course, is still there. And if I touch the enemy, you see again, it's going to a new location. So there we are. The, the game is working. We have uh, lava. We have an enemy that is moving. Um, and by the way, you can see that uh, if you look closely at the enemy, the, uh, the face is, is switching from left to right expressions as it bounces around, uh, which is that rotation I was telling you about earlier on. Now, I did mention that there was an alternative and there is an alternative. Um, it's, it's going to mean a little bit more changing of some of the code here. It's basically this if touching edge and we can have it so that the enemy is instead of um, bouncing off the edges, bouncing off the platform. Now, if we do this, um, it's probably best to change this random location here because otherwise the enemy could end up randomly appearing inside the platform and, and getting stuck. So let's... Um, duplicate this go to block here. So the two changes I've made so far are to change the if touching edge to if touching platform. I've then duplicated the original go to coordinates and I'm taking out the go to random location and putting the start coordinates in instead. What does that do? Well, if I run the game, you'll see that now the enemy is not bouncing off the edges, but bouncing off the platform itself. It does mean that they're not going to be moving around the whole area quite as much. Eventually, uh, through luck, they'll probably end up bouncing around through here, but it will limit them a little bit. Now we can change that, I think. A couple of things that we can do is, first of all, make the enemy smaller uh, because that way they're going to get through these um, gaps a little bit easier. We can also speed the enemy up. So instead of moving three steps, let's move it five steps and see what that does. So again, if I run that, you can see it's now bouncing around and, uh, oh, there we are, it got through that gap there. So it's now moving around the, the whole area. 
so it doesn't now move through the platform it's now um, obstructed by that uh, maybe that's better maybe it's not it's totally up to you uh, and this is really where it's your game and you make that choice so I've shown you both methods neither of them is particularly better than the other um, it's uh, it's going to be up to you to decide uh, which one you want of course if you want to have two enemies you can do you can duplicate that uh, and if we have two enemies then uh, you'll see that they'll start off together and then the random numbers will split them up and you can have as many enemies as you like if you're going to have the enemies bouncing off the platform you may want more than one enemy uh, because that will just make things a little bit harder for the player and of course if you uh, start to get more confident with code later on you could even have the number of enemies increase as the number of the level goes up so we could have one enemy for level one two enemies for level two three enemies for level three and that's something which uh, i will show you i think in uh, lesson 13 i believe it is um, so you will learn that later on but by all means play around with that idea yourself for the moment if you want to uh, so there we go um that's the uh, the game so far in the next tutorial uh, we'll look at adding in lives because at the moment the player can get caught by the lava the player can get caught by the enemy and yes they get sent back to the beginning but they can do that with unlimited lives um, they never fail the game never actually has to end because they've been caught that many times so what we want to do now is limit the user so they only have three lives and if they got, get caught three times or more, bang, that's it, game over. So we'll look at how to do that in the next lesson when you're ready.